What the hell was that? I don't know. Why don't you go check it out? I'm busy. Busy? You're on Facebook. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> Doug, what am I doing out here? <sighs> Just as I thought, nothing. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show dedicated to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. And today, I have an explosive episode for you, thanks to this request. Rafael Montez asked, did you have an explosion tutorial? Nope, I didn't. Well, until today that is. Now I know what you're thinking, we're just gonna grab an explosion from Action Essentials 2 and it'll be like every other tutorial out there and blah blah blah. Well wipe that condescending smirk off your face, you Part of a gun, because not only are we not using any of those explosions, but thanks to our friends over at Ready Pulse, we're going all Michael Bay and giving you an explosion. That's right, Timmy. If you head over to their Kickstarter page right now, you can get a sample of one of their awesome explosions from the upcoming pack for free. And who knows, maybe you want to throw them a few bucks and get a huge discount on those action effects packs. If the boys meet their stretch goal, they'll be releasing even more awesomeness in the form of a smoke effects pack. And who doesn't want that? So guys, in order to complete this effect, you need to download the explosion I just mentioned from this link here. And of course, shoot your actor reacting to said explosion. I decided to shoot mine at night because, let's face it, explosions look way cooler at night. Now before we get into it, I can't forget those damn shoutouts. Roll the tape. I'm still trying to figure out why people actually like that. Well, in the meantime, let's get to work. Okay gang, here we are in, well if you don't know by now, let's just move on shall we? Now before we do anything else, in order to complete this tutorial, you need to head over to the Kickstarter page in the description, that's this one here, scroll down and download this example explosion, because if you use another explosion, these settings might not work as well, and come on, it's not only free, but also, it's very awesome, and thirdly, it's free. So once you've downloaded the explosion, import it in and we can get started. As you can see, I've got my shot set up in a comp and ready to go. Now a quick side note gang, if you haven't shot 4K like me, I would highly recommend either scaling up your footage slightly so you have some room to move when we animate the position, or setting up in a 1280 by 720 comp, as we're going to be animating the footage layer and you don't want it to get cut off and look crappy. If we take a quick look at the finished shot, you can see we had some camera shake, and once our explosion has exploded, the camera pans up slightly to follow the fireball. But for starters, let's get that explosion in first, shall we? Let's grab it, drag it and drop it on top of our footage, and let's change that transfer mode to screen. We can then position and scale it up or down if need be. I personally like this size, so I'm just gonna move it into position onto this grassy area right now. Now if we check out a preview, you can see the explosion and my reaction are a little off. So what I'll do is drag the explosion, say, a couple of frames forward and check it again. And that's much better. But one thing I've noticed is, we have a couple of little sparks in the frame before the explosion. And since I want there to be no warning and then just BOOM, what I'll do is trim, say, four frames from the beginning, that way it just goes BOOM. Nice. So now, we want to follow that fireball up a little bit. So as you may have guessed, our next step is to do just that. So let's select our footage layer, hit P, and then we'll head to the point just before our fireball is about to leave the frame. Let's then hit the stopwatch, head to the end of the comp, and let's bring that position up until we can almost see the edge of our footage. Next, let's head back to the start of the comp and parent our explosion to the footage layer. Now if we check out a preview, you can see it's stuck on our footage and moving smoothly. Our next step is to add that camera shake. For this, I recommend heading over to Video Copilot and grabbing their preset called Aftershake. The link is in the description, of course. But instead of using the recommended preset Aftershake footage, I'm going to use Aftershake Null. 
even though I have no null. Which really doesn't matter as the footage preset has FX motion tile and the null one doesn't. And I personally hate motion tiling footage as it looks kind of tacky because you can totally see those seams. So let's drop that sucker on our footage like I already did and let's make sure all three sliders are zeroed out. We'll then head to the first frame of the explosion, this little one right here, and let's hit all of those slider stopwatches. We'll then move forward one frame, and then we'll crank the first slider up to 10, the second slider to 50, and our final slider to 10 as well. Let's follow that up by scrubbing forward 10 frames and then bumping them all back down to zero. Let's turn on motion blur for the comp and our footage layers and see the result. Nice, huh? Well, apart from the fact that our explosion isn't looking very bright or like it's in the scene at all. Time to change that right now. We'll start by duplicating our explosion and changing the transfer mode from screen to add. Now it's time to play around. We'll start by heading up to effect, stylize and adding a glow. We'll then hit the stopwatch on threshold, set the radius to 500 and hit the stopwatch on that too. We'll then skip ahead four frames, set the threshold to 78 and the radius to 440. We'll then skip ahead roughly 15 more frames, or when the fireball is just starting to leave the frame, head back up, set the threshold to 100 and the radius to 319. By doing this, we'll have an initial big blow out of light, and then as the fireball leaves the frame, it'll start to die down, as you can see. But guys, we ain't done yet. Let's now head up to effect, blur and sharpen, and add ourselves a fast blur. We'll then crank that up to around 25. This will simply make our glow a little glowier as it takes a lot of the harshness away. Our almost last step with the fireball is to head up to effect, color correction and add a hue and saturation. And I'm just gonna change the hue to 21 to give it a bit more of a yellow feeling. I'll then bump the saturation down to minus 25 and the lightness to minus 15. This is merely just a bit of color correcting for my scene guys. Feel free to have a play with these settings and make them work for your shot too. Now our last step is to hit T to bring up opacity Hit the stopwatch, scrub forward until our explosion is starting to go off screen and bring it down to 66. That way, our overlay effects soften a little as the fireball leaves the frame, selling the illusion that the hottest part of the flame is over. Okay, and next step, adding a little environmental lighting, guys. As our explosion is a huge fireball, it should light up this shot, right? So let's do that. Let's head up and grab ourselves a new adjustment layer. Now we'll scale this up to 120% because we're going to parent to our footage layer and we don't want it to get cut off at any point. I'll then grab the pen tool and draw a rough mask along the garage here, down the gate, down the fence, and then I'll bypass myself and then out of the shot and back around to meet up with our first point. Basically, you're masking everything that should be affected by the light. Let's then hit F, feather that mask out around 150 pixels and we'll then parent it to our footage and turn on motion blur. Time to add some stuff. Let's head to effect, color correction, and add exposure. All we're gonna do here is bump this up to three. We'll then find a point on the timeline where we see that first big burst of light, right here. And let's trim that layer to begin here. Let's then hit T, hit the stopwatch on opacity, head to the end of the comp, and bring it down to 35%. If we check out a preview, you can see the shot is now reacting to the big ball of fire in the scene. Next, we've got to deal with the ground around the fire. Now the ground around the blast is a little easier now that we've set up that adjustment layer. We'll duplicate the adjustment layer, drag it down so it sits on top of our footage, turn it off so we can work, we'll then collapse the mask menu down, delete that big old mask, grab the pen tool and draw a nice new mask around the fire like so. We'll then hit F and feather that out around 150 pixels as well. Lastly, let's hit T and hit the stopwatch to cancel out our previous opacity animation as the fire doesn't really fade out and we want our ground to remain illuminated. Alright, the last steps are truly just a cherry on top guys, so if you want to do it, fine, if not, it's all good. If you check the download, you'll find a movie file called Dusty Lens. Now all this is is a dirty lens picture I found and I masked out a few sections and animated the opacity for just a few frames. You can just drag and drop this into the comp change the transfer mode to screen and just have it start wherever your blast begins. It's not a huge deal, but it just adds a little bit of depth to your shot. The last thing is just a little color pop. Let's head up, grab an adjustment layer, trim it to the same point as the other adjustment layers, like so. We'll then head up to effect, color correction and add a photo filter. On its default setting, this just adds a slight warm filter to your shot. 
much like a flame might. And if we check out a preview, that my friends is making a sweet explosion. Oh, and before you ask, the sounds for the explosion were from the Rody Polis Shootout audio pack. Head over there and check them out for yourself. So that's adding an explosion to your scene, gang. As you can see with this new explosion pack, it's really not that hard to composite a realistic explosion into your shots. Since it's not cut off or overblown, you can really dial it down and get it to work for your particular shot. Now guys, we only have a few days left until the Kickstarter ends, so you don't have much longer to take advantage of that 50% discount. Oh, and don't forget, you only have 23 days left to submit your entry into the 10K short film competition. But that, of course, is my time, gang. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it. If you're new here, seductively bend over that subscribe button. And to keep up to date with all things learned, here's the Facebook and Twitter. Hey guys, my name is Rohan, and until next week, keep learning.